Well, good morning, guys. Another fine day at the sawmill. This is like my new happy place. Today, we're working on the inside. We got to button up our sharpening station, our chill out location. We, you know, dare to call it a man cave, she shed, you know, a place to have all your stuff. Because when you're milling, you kind of need some stuff. So we're going to make a place for it. That's what we're out to today. Let's get started. There is sort of a, uh, while you're at it job, I had a lot of the uh, stuff that wasn't great for boards that I made battens with, so I got a three inch batten. And uh, what that sawmill does excellently is resaw stuff. So when you want to put a whole bunch of uh, material back on and then recut it to size, you can make a whole lot of wood in a hurry. That's a whole lot of battens. All right, if you guys don't know what the heck this thing is, this is a log arch. And uh, last year we used it and, uh, well, we didn't really have the right setup on the tractor. We had the uh, tongue on the forks and what we were doing is, uh, well, I don't think I was given good enough directions. And then the log got stuck and uh, we pushed and we bent this shaft. I don't think our, I don't think it should hook to the right. Well, that much anyways. The shaft should be straight, long, stiff, but this one is a little noodly. New whole territory. New whole territory? Yeah. Maybe one more. Another one. You're hard, huh? Too hard. Too hard. Okay. <laughs> it's probably good. Straight it out quite a bit. Yeah, it's drilling hole. But anyways, this guy works kind of like a lever, so you hook your uh, you hook your log up there and then you uh, you lift it. So we're just gonna fix this up and then this guy, you once you're done hooking up, you hook it on the tongue of the uh the tractor at this point and then you just carry it out because when the weather is this nice and the mud's is starting to go you don't want to be dragging your logs through the mud and then to the sawmill so this guy lifts it off the ground we'll show you This is the first time I've used a chest camera. What do you think, Don? Do I look like an android? Yeah. You look, um... It's normal. Normal, pretty much, yeah. Summertime. So we're going to move these guys out of the way. This is our firewood. Here, I'm going to move that a little bit. There, there we go. Move that guy. That's probably good, Don. We'll be, able to, we'll be able to fork that one. So the idea behind this thing is you can maneuver it easily with your own strength to get it into the kind of narrow places. As you can see, it rolls pretty good. This used to be a, a, uh, a tombstone cart. That's where the wheels came from. So we're gonna try to get the log in that general vicinity. Center of the log, right about there. I'm gonna go right to the, right there. No, nope. too far. Go in front. Yeah, right there. Right there, and then I'm gonna take this guy. Tilt it up. I think we gotta chain it. There. So the idea is to, when you lift the, uh, 
log up, it lifts the back end of the log. Okay. Oh, I feel like it's gonna go that time. There you go. This is relatively light now. We don't quite got it in the right spot because he's not balanced, but you can see here, this head's off the ground. <sighs> All right, so we got her out of the bush. We're just gonna chain her up a little further so she doesn't kind of wibble wobble as we go. But uh, this thing's a great little uh, invention in order, like if you had an ATV and you wanted to skid logs out, as you can see, all it does is it hooks up to a, uh, you know, just a receiver. And you can lift like, uh, like that's probably what, 800, 900 pound log? I have no idea. Easy. What's the on your tractor? Well, it's, it's got the using leverage. No, but I meant on the loader. Oh, the loader? Yeah, I can't lift it on the loader, so yeah, so. I'm just taking out the front so it doesn't, uh, so she doesn't do the funky chicken when we turn. today is to level this area out as you can see it's really hard to show on camera how unlevel something is but if I throw a level on this guy I am about five inches high on this side here so what I have to do is actually move some dirt from either here to there to make myself a level spot and then regrade on the outside so water doesn't come in because I want my floor to be level Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan. In order to make my area flat, I first started off with a rake and I raked out all of the organic material that was sitting on top because that tends to get in the way and I kind of want to pile that in a different area. And then once that's done, I took my tractor and removed a little bit of the topsoil on the right side in order to flatten out my area. And then once that was done, I kind of had to dig a little bit near the edge in order to get the material out because I didn't want our tractor to take the wall out. And then once that was done, I had a couple of buckets of sand I had laying around in order to further smooth it out. And then I used a six foot level and I ran it back and forth in order to give it more of a fine detail and to kind of mitigate the mud and give a little bit of drainage underneath. I don't think I need drainage underneath, but you know what? It doesn't hurt. Well, there's our subfloor. This is going to uh, support our actual finished floor. And my plan is to do some uh, hardwood cookies on here, but this is a great repurposing of old garage door panels. It offers an R value and it's going to uh, keep the water out of the cookie. As you can see, there's styrofoam on the inside of that guy. And then there's steel on both sides. So that'll keep us up out of the water. Give us a nice subfloor. Do not sound the sirens or air horns in the building. Sawmill, 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 sawmill. I ended up picking up these garage doors. They were uh, fire hall doors that were being replaced for more energy efficient ones. These ones are just a single pane. They were being upgraded to double pane to be more efficient. And they're about uh, just under 14 feet. Uh, but what's cool about them is they're made out of aluminum and they're kind of made to spec. So they're, they're designed to be, you know, custom. So what you can do is actually you take them apart. So you take the, uh, the aluminum mullions apart and you can shrink them down. So it, for my use, I need about 104. So what I've done is I've actually taken one of the panels out of the window and then shrunken them down to the size that I need. And then I got an extra window for, you know, a later project. But I got quite a few of these things. These are really, nobody wants them because they're mostly glass weight. But uh, if you have them, 
you can actually take them apart, make a whole bunch of mo money and recycle the aluminum because I think, I don't even know what the price of aluminum is today. Actually, you guys, if you guys know the price of aluminum at your local scrapyard, you should put it down below in the comments. I think it was in and around 50 cents a pound. And this stuff's like clean aluminum, uh, like not painted. So it's like the premium stuff. If you guys are wondering where to get old garage door panels, a lot of the garage door installers get shipments of brand new garage doors and they're sandwiched between sacrificial panels of garage doors and the recyclers don't like taking them because they're filled with styrofoam. So they might be looking to get rid of them. So if you guys want your, you know, want some garage door panels, reach out to a garage door installer and they might have some. Also, they're always removing and replacing older garage doors. And uh, again, they have no use for those either. So you could probably get them there as well. But uh, yeah, I usually stockpile a whole bunch of them because you never know when you're gonna use them and they don't really go bad. It's not like, you know, it's a banana on your counter. Stockpile them, they don't take up that much room. I've always wanted an office with, you know, a view, big picture window. That's pretty neat looking. It's got that blue tint in it, so it doesn't allow too much light in, but it allows enough light so you can see out. It's actually got that privacy screen on. I think it's got a UV protectant on it too, but uh, it'll prevent uh, any you know harsh light from coming in. Nice relaxing spot. And to boot, it's very thick glass. It's like quarter inch thick, so it'll actually dampen a lot of the noise if the sawmill is in operation. So you can actually sit inside your office while somebody else is outside milling your wood for you. That's not gonna happen, but the thought's there. All right, we're going to move around to flooring now. We're going to take advantage of the warm weather to allow our glue to dry. Now the plan over here is to make like a cookie floor, but uh, we're going to do it rather quickly with the sawmill. We're going to end up bunch of, making a bunch of cookies, but first of all, we have to actually harvest some, uh, some trees. I've got a couple down already that are just sitting there, but there's a lot of standing dead ones that I can make cookies out of because I want to kind of place them here and there. And like the protective coating on and glue them to the floor and then I'm going to grout them like you would tile. But we first got to go grab them. All right, we're on the hunt for some ash logs. This is currently what we have. We don't want too big a diameter ones. They're about uh, five or six inches in, in diameter. Don's got the old trusty saw, but we're in the, in the bush. Like this guy here, this guy here, it's dead all the way up. As you can see, there's no top on it. I don't want it to break off, but uh, that guy there, I can probably get a lot of uh, a lot of cookies out of there. And the good thing is about it is it's dry. There's a whole bunch and they're pretty much everywhere. Even like this, this guy here is just a branch. But it's just sitting there. That's the kind of stuff, the diameter that we want. So we're gonna gather some of that stuff and then we can make our floor with it. The current plan is we're going to set a piece of plywood in here. It does come right out. And then we're going to set our uh, pieces of wood upright. Oh, she ran away on Dawn. Oh, everything's falling apart. So we need a place to put these logs. It will become very apparent in a moment what we're going to do. So what we'll do is we'll have to block. We can actually take the other stop. We take the other stop and put it there. 
we got a nice even spot, right? Versatility down this thing. Let's take this out. We got our cookie factory doll set up. This is either going to work really, really well or fail catastrophically. My plan is to ratchet strap the base of these logs in the upright position and then skim off the top at a controlled depth in order to make myself a lot of cookies in a hurry. I don't know if anybody's ever tried this before. We're going to give it a whirl. We're going to, we're going to ratchet strap it. I don't know if this is, this isn't in the official Norwood handbook. But as long as your material is clamped solidly, it should be okay. Here, Don. I picked that strap up from Princess Auto. They were on sale. Was it 4,000 pound braking strength that we got there yet? Are we, have we cranked it to 4,000 pounds? I don't think so. The, the idea behind this is that every swipe we gain probably, probably four or five square feet worth of flooring material and we got this much i think i'm gonna make about an inch and a half thickness on the cookies all right don is this a solid plan hopefully <laughs> don's don's back there safety officer don <laughs> you know it's actually quite scary is that the fact that the blade is a kind of like a head height this is the first time i've done this let's uh let's see how this works <laughs> All right, what we're finding is that anytime one of them moves ever so slightly, it uh, throws it off. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another ratchet strap around the midsection here to kind of secure the, see the top sections. And then we're going to move it down as we go in order to secure the thing, the logs, because as you can see, they kind of, as soon as they move, Don, just grab another ratchet strap. We're going to ratchet strap that thing. Try it again. At least we got her flat anyways.
John, did you ever think you're working in a cookie factory? No, look at this though. I know. It's like, that's actually kind of cool. It looks like a like a, a gear. Is it a camshaft? Yeah, it does. That's kind of neat. You got to know that's going to be something at some point. Look how many cookies we got out of that one cut. And then some. We can throw those got the other side. So as you can see, it works. That's actually, does it, doesn't that look like a camshaft? That's pretty cool. I like it. There's a couple cookies. Next time you buy one of these guys, or if you've ever bought one of these guys at those little craft stores and they charge you a buck and a half, well, that's probably how they make them. There's a nearly a million dollars worth of little cookies here. comfortable floor ever it's actually nice and cool on this hot hot day well <clears throat> my shoes have ever become clean the idea is to uh, put cookies all over this thing and because we got such unseasonably warm weather they'll dry overnight so we're rushing against time to get this thing done and let it dry overnight All right, so next on the agenda where all our cookies are dry, they're all solid onto the metal subfloor. And Don's gonna actually give it a little bit of a sweep to get all the black dirt that's on the top of the cookie. You see it there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw a top coat of varnish on it. Uh, Cause what we're gonna do actually is point as opposed to grout these things. So what that involves is like a piping bag full of mortar. And we're gonna just squirt it in all this stuff once it's all dry, but first we gotta seal it seal the top and then we're gonna we're actually gonna seal it first and then sand it because it is a it is a shop floor so we're not going for you know glossy finish or epoxy finish we're just going for like a a nice sweepable floor how's it feel on your feet though oh uh, feels comfortable okay. that's good feels like a floor i don't yeah exactly good not falling through or anything so it's got lots of grip it's probably very grippy Anti-slip floor. Fun fact, I've had this stuff kicking around for, uh, I don't know, 10 years, 20 years. This is a uh, flame control coating. This is designed to go on wood and it makes it essentially fireproof if you put a couple coats on it. It's engineered. I think these two gallons, back when I bought them, were $400. They were $200 a gallon. There's only there's a little bit left in there, and there's a little bit left in here. There's a part A and a part B. We're going to mix A and B together and throw it on and uh, hope for the best. That's the plan. Floors Mahal. How do you make a floors Mahal? Look at the, 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 there's a nice pillow. Maybe the pillow should go like this. I don't know. It's like a wooden pillow. There we go. That's a better pillow. Roll around on my pillow. It's hard. Oh, that's better. There, just cozy up to the camera. Got myself a nice ear block pillow. Hmm. Laying down in the cookie factory. I just have a nap. So these cookies are well stuck to the floor now, and uh, we are going to uh, coat the insides of these little cracks with uh, icing, or better known as mortar or grout, depending on how you slice it. It's going to be a lot of work. You just have a nap instead. Start the day with a nap. It is relatively comfortable. You could probably just lay here all day. <clears throat> oh, time to wake up. For the mix I'm using, uh, what am I gonna use? One part Portland to 
three part sand and that's gonna give me a little malleable mix. The more Portland you put, the more brittle it becomes. So I'm gonna do one part Portland, three part sand, kind of like what I did at the log cabin because that is holding up awesomely and it should allow me a lot more working time. So that's the plan is to mix it in this wheelbarrow, move it on over there, use my icing bag, which looks like a pointing bag. Well, it looks like a big bag of icing. And I'm gonna squirt it in the cracks. But first I gotta mix this stuff. Where's Don when you need him? Well, before I start doing this floor, I want you guys to guess how long it's actually going to take. If you were to estimate how long it would take to do it, put your guess down below and uh, I'll let you guys know in the next video just so people can't fast forward to the end. And uh, somebody that gets close without going over, not gonna do the prices, right? Whoever's the closest, you can go over, you can be under, whoever's closest to the actual time, I will, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Let's first, first things first, guess how long it's gonna take, and then we'll go from there. All right, well that wasn't so bad. I got the thing all grouted out. It's just gotta dry probably overnight. It's got a lot of, it's got a lot of mortar in there, so. It, uh, it's gonna dry and we'll see how it, uh, how it looks. But uh, I think I'm gonna take advantage of this, uh, well, it's kind of like a very warm spring, summer-like weather. I've got a couple of buddies coming over, Mike and Grant, you guys might know those guys from uh, previously. And we're gonna actually do some little bit of spring cleaning, get the pond area all kind of buttoned up. We got some raking to do. And then uh, we're gonna get the hot tub and the uh, actual pool all kind of set for uh, for summer because anybody that's ever had a pool knows that you need to you need to clean those things out regardless if you've got a cover or anything so basically open them for the summer even though it's unseasonably warm and uh yeah so that's what we're gonna do and uh yeah take advantage of the warm weather but before we do that you guys make sure to guess how long that took in real time put your guesses down below in the next video i will reveal how long it actually took to get it done well, bigger take the opportunity for the spring weather to do some spring cleaning. So I got it pretty much cleaned up. This is the old uh, Astro turf. It needs another little bit of a vacuum. There was a lot of clay from uh, over the winter, but we got the pool all fired up, and uh, we got the heater going. We got the heater going. We've got the uh, we got the heat going. We got the hot. We got the hot plate going. We got the cooking. You can see we filled that up with pond water. It's got that nice green glow. That means it's spring water or something. And uh, we've got the uh, we got the heater fired up. So the idea is to get this into pot tub weather because, well, because we can't get three people in here. So that's dry. That's the uh, that's the wood fired hot tub. So we're gonna make this guy the wood fired hot tub. And uh, who do we got here? We got Grant. You know Grant. Hey. Last time we did an overnight uh, at the uh, at the off grid. Grant burnt the smoker down, and we got Mike. He's cooking. <laughs> Again, okay, somehow, okay. somehow. I don't know how. Cooking. What do you got? You got some. We got some potatoes, and we got some garlic and some garlic and onions. Garlic and, then and onions. Some spices. Some sp secret special. And then we're gonna bread. go on the tub. Yeah, but we gotta cook our room temperature meat first. Room temperature. Yeah. It's room temperature meat, Mike. That's uh, <laughs> apparently that's the uh, that's how Mike is known. That's me. I don't know how, but yeah. uh, I've I've gained that name. There you go. You guys can check me out. Yeah, testing with Mike. You That's can actually me. see uh, him uh, stick his probe into various electronics. Make, make sure you're age. If you're watching. <laughs> it's a kid-friendly show. <laughs> anyway, so we got some. We got some T-bone T-bone steaks. Yeah. T-bone mm -hmm. steaks ready to ready to rock. And uh, we're gonna put this on camera because uh, I wanted to see him do it. Uh, Mike's gonna jump in the pond. Yeah, I've uh, committed to it. The ice yep. has come off. Um, like last week, it was snowing. Yep. Which is crazy. And this week it is is crazy warm. It's gonna be a polar dip. A polar dip. So I'm yeah. ready for it. We're gonna watch. We're gonna film. We're gonna we're gonna definitely watch. And then that's the idea behind getting the uh, the uh, pool all set up so you can yeah. uh, unfreeze. It'd be great. Looking forward to it. That's the update on the pond. Look at that. The uh, clear. You can almost see right down when the sun gets to the right uh, angle. So as you guys can see here, this looks like, you know, barren wasteland because it is early spring time, but we have our uh, perennial food plot here. This is, my brother actually planted this last year and it's coming up already. This was uh, a food plot by uh, Cabela's Bass Pro. They have the uh, the seed, so you just kind of till in the ground and you yeah, sprinkle it on and it, it uh, comes up. So the idea is the, the deer or whatever come back out of the swampy area and uh, they come feast on this uh, this food here. 
as you can see look at that all that stuff that's coming up it's nice and green you know our condors windmill still standing ready ready to catch the wind okay you want to tell, tell me about your casualty what you got <clears throat> so after our uh incident of frankie eating all our hamburgers and we all walked up <laughs> away from here they don't know that story oh they don't no not this not these guys so i'll tell the story uh grant had made some burgers some fresh burgers he had got some ground beef and we had two pounds of it and we had them in little balls sitting on a table and we were waiting for them to become room temperature or something anyways frankie came down and ate them all every single every, burger every one of them every burger there two pounds left. two pounds of ground beef uh yeah gone so Grant, you were coming down here quickly. I was coming down here to protect our steaks because I was worried because nobody knew where Frankie was. <clears throat> and I ran through the bush in my steel toe flip flops <laughs> and a stick oh. penetrated my, between my toes. It, it was not fun. There's, there's a story. There's, there's a little blood. There's a little there blood. There is, like we can blood. follow the blood trail. We could, we're gonna be able to follow you later on. Yeah, the yeah. blood trail. There's actually, a, I have a, a similar story of my childhood. You wanna hear my, my childhood story that people will probably cringe. My brother, the Wooded Beardsman, you can check him out on his channel, but he was running on the beach. Like just picture Baywatch style running on the beach and he jammed a stick so far between his big toe and the toe beside it, it had to be surgically removed. And I went with him to the ER and the, the doctor had these, uh, they were needleless pliers. And yeah. the suction of this stick stuck between, it was, oh, it was, this, <laughs> it was like a plunger and it, it can't, oh, it was something. I, yeah, that was, uh, that was traumatizing. That's a core memory. That's a core memory. Now it's your core memory too. Uh, we're just gonna wait for these guys to cook, and then we're gonna enjoy our our dinner. That's the uh, that's the current plan, and then uh, and then Mike's gonna go for a, a jump in the pond. I'm jumping in the I'm jumping. jumping in the pond. Oh, that's good, Grant. Oh yeah, we're selling the sizzle, buddy. We're not selling the steak. We're selling the sizzle. There's a gratuitous advertisement for m-usa.com. That is the uh, grill company that makes these grills. You guys can check one on their website. The link will be in the description below if you want to check them out. I've featured them many times. And uh, what we're doing, we got the dual. We got the mm griddle at the back, which is acting as a warming tray. And we got the grrr grill in the front that we're cooking our T-bones on. Do I want to talk about my potatoes? Sure, I'll talk about my potatoes. We have roasted potatoes. We have um, yellow onion. We have garlic. Uh, my secret blend of spices don't tell your brother and uh olive oil and a little bit of uh love why is it a secret why can't you tell them the spices I, I, I can't do it okay i can't do it it's it's one of those things where if i tell someone they're going to be making their own and then it's not going to be as pleasant all right if cool. you if i made them you know we'll, we'll keep it we'll keep it as a trade trade secret it's... all right don't tell anyone all right well if you guys can look really closely you could probably tell what kind of it's uh don't look it's, look, it's, it's... look away are you a medium rare? Because that's probably about medium rare. Like, uh, you medium, medium well? Medium? Not medium. That's probably fine. That's good. Hmm? It's garlic. This garlic is perfectly done. You're going to eat the garlic? Oh, yeah. I, garlic. I did not garlic. realize we just... Uh, this is... Mm -hmm. I don't... Uh, I don't get out much. That's okay. So when I when I get the... Uh... So everything in here is edible? Everything. Yeah. And my common question is, is it cooked? Because... It is... is it cooked? It's mashed potatoes. It's oh. potatoes. Look at this. Have steam coming off. Oh yeah, they must be good. These are mashed potatoes. Oh, well, they could fall apart on the fork. They must be done. Delicious. Mashed potatoes. Let's just try to give her a whirl. They're hot. Very hot. Oh. They're too hot. And the best part is, if you flip it upside down, there's the crispy one. The crispy yes. one. You got crispy fried underneath. Right at the bottom. Well, it's. I got no taste buds left, so that's good. Uh -oh. No, I'm kidding. They didn't. It wasn't that hot. Casualty. Uh oh. Don't look. We're in the woods. No behind. Yeah, it's, it's five second rule. You just. You, I was gonna eat them right out of the tin foil. Is I'm like. You just put it right on the top. There you go. That's that's beautiful looking. Look at that. What a meal. See that? I'm not mind the way for Grant. There, Grant. You can be further away. You're gonna have to uh, bring us up the hill. Yeah. We're not gonna be able to move. 
<laughs> Roll you up the hill. You know what? We'll just throw you in the back of the tractor. Yeah, perfect. And uh, and away we go. Mm. So do we let this thing rest for five minutes? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's, is it good, Grant? What's your what's your opinion on that? We're gonna find out here. Oh, we haven't. We're just, I'm already uh, salivating. So I usually like the little tiny piece next to the like the little round part. I don't know what the heck that is. That's the proper technical term on this little guy right there. That little round part in that's the. That's the yummy part. It is the. That's the best part. If they can make a whole meal out of just the yummy parts, right, right there. That little guy. That's. Oh. We're gonna pull that apart. Nicely done, Grant. Let's see. Thank you. Oh. Wow, that's good. Oh yeah. It's the the best part is. Can those frogs be quiet? No, I'm kidding. We'll cook them. Cook them. Cook them frog. I don't think can. I think they're protected, those guys. Those, if you guys don't know, you guys probably can't actually hear that. The frogs are currently, um, they're making babies. Is that what they're doing? Oh, yeah. Should I be looking over there? I'm not old enough yet. Look you already, there. You yeah. already saw the, you you had a handful of them. I did, yeah. So there's, there's tadpoles being, um, created over there mm -hmm. and uh that's a tangent i didn't want to go anyways the steak's delicious <laughs> and the potatoes are great well, I'm sorry. Mm. it's right we're not gonna be able to move after this you're right do we yeah we're gonna have to take a ride up yeah oh. who's driving the frogs mm, okay <laughs> all right as much as i like chewing on camera i'm gonna I'm gonna, we're gonna finish our meal and then we're gonna, we'll do a closing, closing notes on how, how we feel after this giant steak. Looking forward to it. Actually, there's a question. What's the perfect thickness of steak? So you get the Costco ones are like inch and a half yeah. are like a little bit, they're, they're a little bit too big to cut in half again. Um, and then this guy is about three quarters of an inch thick. What's the perfect mm. thickness of steak? Down below, let me know. I wanna know. Mm -hmm. I want to know as well. You do? I do. You want to know if they if they if they warm their steaks with their hands first. I actually want to know the thickness in millimeters. Dude, you I do. No. Sorry. Inches, inches. I'm an inch guy. We, we got to we got to appeal to all the audience. All right. So the guys in Europe yep. that that have the millimeters in millimeters and uh in uh you know the proper way in North America give us an inches. <laughs> All right, we're gonna enjoy our dinner. Yeah. We'll be right back. So, Mike, you've decided. Yeah. You're gonna jump. It's hot. It, it has got to be well over 100 in this thing. Oh yeah, it's. I it's, don't know if you guys can see the steam, but they can I'm see the steam. I think. I am hot right now. It is hot. Yep. Very warm. What does it say? Uh, well, Did you I stick don't... your watch underwater, and that's the good sign. No, time? my watch went to bed, so I'm gonna say. Uh, hang on. I'm trying to see what the ambient temperature is. Oh, ambient is like 10. No, it's not. Oh, the ambient as in above the tub. 16 degrees. 16 degrees above the tub. Above the tub. Air temperature forecast is uh, 16 degrees currently. Doable. And you're going to do it. The next clip you see is me in that pond. Really? Is that peer pressure? No, that's just me. All right. <clears throat> cool. Remember, this tub is definitely sitting at like 98 to 100. <laughs> I it actually is, put, I put the lid on so it doesn't get too hot because I don't want to cook my friends. Uh... <laughs> Unsuccessful. <laughs> Unsuccessfully. I just look like a like a I, I'm like you can't see me. You're in the tub with a uh, sweater on. That's right. Well, I just got out because I I had to tend to some things. All right, you ready? You ready? You're, you're just gonna run and jump. I'm just gonna run and jump. I'm either gonna jump you got, directly in. Or... You gotta jump to like there, but make remember there's a, there's a there's a thing that goes down. You gotta get you gotta get down. Don't go down too deep. Holy crap! Ready? You gotta jump like to there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that dude. Can you find the edge of the tub? I should. Oh yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> 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 Let me out of here. <laughs> I did it. Oh dude, oh. man. That was that was cold. Ooh. Yeah. How does that feel? <laughs> so good. <laughs> man. <sighs> I'm cold just thinking about that. It's <laughs> good for you. That All right, well, good. that's Mike, you're the first person to jump in the pond. Uh, How does it feel? Great. Excellent. Yeah, is it like yeah. your heart going weird there? <sighs> describe. Describe what that was like. 
It's like ripping off a band-aid for your whole body. Oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> would you yeah. do it again? It's good. Yeah, I would actually. Okay, well. Now that I'm in here again, it's, it's extremely warm. <laughs> it's well over 105, I think. I, well, I, I, think, I don't think it's that hot, but it's close. I'm actually burning. I have to get out. <laughs> and it's too warm. We need a regulator on there. All right, well, look at that. Mike, true to his word, jumps in the old pond. Is he swimming? Right there, look. Right where I jumped. Over. Yeah. Did you kill it? Nope. No. No, it's fine. I saw it swim. All right. <laughs>